you are watching an OraCloud Plus Training as a Service video snippet. Snippets are concise, targeted tutorials explaining how to use, configure, integrate, deploy, and support Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications. Snippets are delivered via FAST, the Fusion Application Support Tool. FAST is accessible via the web at www.oracloud.plus. No more watching hours of learning past style videos to get to the five minute snippet you need. Learn Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications in minutes, not hours. Hello, and welcome to the Procurement Shared Services video presentation. This video is intended for beginners looking to learn more about Oracle's ability to create a shared service procurement model in Fusion. It walks through how to set up a global procurement shared service model within Fusion Procurement Cloud. This video snippet, as with all video snippets, can be found within Oracle Cloud Plus's FAST, that's Fusion Application Support Tool. Within FAST, go to the Procurement Cloud Training Group, the Intro to Procurement Cloud Training Center, and look under the Configure menu option. To request access to FAST, email your name and contact information to access at or cloud.plus. Please remember to set the email title to fast access request. Okay, so key topics for this presentation are as follows. What is shared services? Fusion's shared service model, if you will. Fusion's enterprise data structure. Fusion's enterprise data structure in a shared service model. What transactions belong to what BUs. How to switch legal entities and how charge accounts slash segments get defaulted. So first, shared services. Shared services is a term defining an operational philosophy that involves centralizing administrative functions that were once performed in each or separate divisions. Services that can be shared among the various business units of a company include, among other things, purchasing. Next, Fusion's shared service. So Fusion has specific functionality to create what I call operational business units separate from accounting business units. We'll get into that in a minute. But those business units share the processing and act as a client or service. In this case, the procurement BU acts as a client or service to the requesting BUs. So in the model, you can see on the left, requesting BU East, West, North, and South probably used to have their own procuring function, but they now consolidated that procurement function into an operational business unit, most likely they also consolidated it physically in one place. That procurement BU will take the shared procurement transactions. So it will manage suppliers to include registrations, qualifications, catalogs, orders, agreements, contracts, and more. After those, that operational business unit, which processes on behalf of other legal entities, we'll talk about that later, then can have the paying business units perform their own payment functions with inner unit accounting. They can consolidate those functions as well. It's just not a discussion being had here in terms of being a payment shared service model. We're just focusing on procurement. Three, Fusion's enterprise data structure. So within Fusion, business units cross ledgers into legal entities rolled up in divisions and an enterprise. And so you see here, the American business unit goes into something called American Ledger, but there are two legal entities, one main, one real estate, and they roll into a division which rolls into an enterprise. So now Fusion's EDS within a shared service model. So you can see here legal entity main, real estate, even one called holding entity are legal entities within a business unit as business units in EBS and Fusion often are regional or country based. And so you see that here. Now, the operational business unit on the top is this enterprise supply management function, which is operational, meaning it doesn't do accounting. It's a processing business unit to handle the shared service work. The accounting business units or ABUs, which you see there on the left, are the actual countries. North America is grouped, Europe is grouped, Asia is grouped. These are just examples, but you get the idea. Now, let's take a look at which transactions belong to which BUs. So now you can see America has requests in their accounting business unit. Their receipts, invoice, payments, assets, projects 
are all within their accounting business unit, which is the actual business unit for that country versus a global supply management business unit that's operational in nature. That manages a lot of the transactions, but the accounting can't be for an operational business unit. It has to remain with the accounting business unit, which is the region based. If you have different legal entities within your accounting business unit, then you have a decision to make in terms of how the requests get linked to different legal entities, how the, or which contracts belong to which legal entities, who is a primary, who are the tertiary legal entities on the contracts, et cetera. So now if I have a business unit called US, I don't switch legal entities. We said earlier, the business unit goes through the ledger. So how do I change my legal entity? Well, you can use your deliver to location to switch your legal entity, or rather your requesters can use their deliver to location. Lastly, how charge accounts and segments get defaulted. So this is a very high level approach, but provides some context or approach help. The ledger calls accounting definitions. The accounting definitions can either grab or populate the accrual and the charge account. So you may have a constant for your accrual, think offsetting account. You may have a constant or a starting point for your charge account. That's the account that shows on the rec, the PO, whatever. That can come from the employee expense string, which could be populated from HCM, whatever your HCM interface system is or through Fusion. But you can grab that string and have it be the starting point. Then whether it's the natural account override, whether it's the project account override, whether it's the asset account override, you can create rules at the what they call segment, which is the accounting field within the string, your account, your department, your cost center, to override whatever that particular segment in the string is. And that can all be done within tab, the transaction account builder. Okay, so are you ready for the next video? Well, do you understand shared services? Do you understand how Fusion supports shared services in procurement? And do you understand how the default charge and segments get set up or even overridden? If the answer is no, then either watch again or feel free to reach out to me directly. You can see here on the left, that's my email address, and I'm always available to answer questions. If the answer is yes, great, then maybe you want to watch more video. So you can go to our playlist out on YouTube by going to YouTube and searching on AuraCloud Plus Inc. Or you can go from our website to the tool we call FAST, the Fusion Application Support Tool, and you can access the full catalog of our learn, use, configure, integrate, deploy, and support videos online. So that's it for this tutorial. We hope you found it informative and keep watching.